everyone. Happy Saturday. Now, for this video, what I'm hoping to do is to get you to grab a sketchbook, an iPad, whatever, and just draw and paint whatever you want or whatever comes to mind. No stress, no pressure. You know, the point isn't really to make anything significant or grand, but to instead to just step away from the usual distractions during this video. And if you want to just sit there, that's fine too. In this video, I was mostly just sketching random things for about two hours, uh, mostly characters, actually all all characters. Some of them have interactions between each other. They were mostly from imagination. No reference was used. I had some inspiration of like visual things, so like some clothing and cloth, but regarding the figures and the characters, that's all just kind of from scratch, if you will. Before I get into the topic of the day, uh, there are actually some other channels I want to recommend if you want to kind of get into that artist mindset, whether it's flow state or understanding more about yourself and how you relate your identity to art and all that stuff. The channel being my friend, uh, my friend's channel, Steven Zapata. You might know from having him here on this channel in the past. Anyway, I went to school with him, uh, worked with him in the industry. I lived with him for a couple of years. Um, great artist. He's definitely a big ball of mystery. You know, having been roommates with him for two years, it was like witnessing some kind of weird movie or Netflix series unfolding before my eyes, just watching him exist in the same place as myself. He's quite the character. Uh, if you're looking for like hyped up cotton candy content to get you excited about popular art trends, definitely look elsewhere. If, however, you're the least bit curious about peeking into a metaphysical space, a landscape of mystery, art, questions of our own nature, then, then definitely go check out Steven Zapata. Definitely subscribe and congratulations to him. I think he recently hit about 25k subs and I think he's going to be climbing very fast. Um, another channel, of course, is Adam Duff, Lucid Pixel. You probably already know him, but he's a really great artist great person, a guide, a teacher. He's like an Obi-Wan Kenobi of the art world. All right, so back to my video. There are so many things that you are missing out on right now, but that's okay. I know, I know. That feeling of missing out, whatever it might be, wherever it is, the feeling is very strong. There are millions of short, bite-sized glimpses into random distractions, whether it's new videos on YouTube that are short or, or new tweets or art or TikToks, reels, whatever. Totally get it. We all fall into loops of quick distractions, which I believe very much get in the way of the art process, especially if you want to get into the flow state. If you can just sit away from that endless river of data and content just for a bit right here with this video, Again, no stress, no pressure. You just might uncover some unexpected things unfolding in your own artwork or your own thoughts or creativity by not interrupting your flow. You might even be, well, you know, tempted to look at your phone, social media, whatever it might be. I personally went ahead and put my phone on the do not disturb function and put it in a different room. We do have a strange need to feel eternally connected to that feed, that digital feed, like a phantom umbilical cord into the digital art world, the digital world at large, not really realizing that that cord has a chokehold on your soul, your artistic soul. And I understand the irony that this is right now a video on YouTube, which is part of that, but whatever, that's fine. Anyway, so where I want to get to um, regarding us as artists and for you right here, right now, is to kind of get a better picture of how that's affecting your work, your mindset, and how to kind of just step away from it. So let's just kind of rewind for a little bit. Let's just imagine a scene for a moment. The scene being the art world. There are a lot of things going on in the art world at all times, and you are in the middle of it. So picture yourself in this huge, huge dome where all the art things are happening. New art styles, new reference packs, discussions, 
how to make money, tutorials, industry, controversy, etc. It's all swirling around you like a hurricane in this giant dome. No matter which direction you look, it's endless. There's always new content. There will always be new things that will lure you in. What I want to let you realize is you can actually step outside of that dome. You can walk past all the things that want your attention, screaming at you, telling you, hey, leave a like, share. It's telling you things like you can change the entire world with an angry tweet and other delusions that might seem captivating or enticing. You can find your way through this maze to the outside, of course, if you so choose. It is indeed possible, even though everyone and everything in there is screaming at you to stay in there, to stay distracted, stay confused, stay overwhelmed, stay anxious. But I say, you don't have to. You have no obligation to be swept up by online feeds and content every five seconds. And the reason I say this is because when you find a way to step away from it all, and you finally feel separated from it, all that's left is just you. It just so happens that that's where serious growth happens as an artist, but also as a person. So let's just go back to that image again, that, that big dome right? You're inside of it. Everything in there is happening. Um, and here I am saying, hey, you can, you can leave it. And so there you might be at the edge of the dome between the constant flow of art and then the other side where there's nothing happening. And, you know, all that art stuff that's swirling in there, it's not going anywhere. You can always come back. But you have every right to step away, to walk through that tiny little hidden door to the outside world. Okay, all right. So let's imagine that you stepped out just for a moment. That's all right. You can walk away. It might be hard at first, but you still might feel like you're in its gravitational field tugging at you. You can hear the notifications, the sounds of new posts, updates on controversies, but you have the power to achieve escape velocity, to get away from it all. One step after that, one step after the next, Slowly, you begin to distance yourself from it all. And before you know it, things are getting quiet. And you can see something new, something beautiful. The sky, the wondrous sights of the universe, the stars, forests, whatever. There's a very beautiful emptiness. And from this distance, as you look back at the dome, far, far away in the distance, it's flashing bright lights at you. Red lights, notifications, stacking up, begging for your attention, saying, come back here. What are you doing? You're missing out. This new thing just dropped. And in this moment, you have the option to say to yourself, hmm, interesting. I am tempted. I want to know what the red notification is, but I will put it off for later, and that's okay. Even if you feel like you're missing out on the latest updates on the most recent hot topic or hot take, you can go back anytime. Don't worry. However, what I want to do here is create a sort of mental map, a new landscape. The dome is over there. We've established that it's far away. You're outside of it right now in this metaphorical, if you're following along the, the mental games that I'm playing right now. So the dome is far away. It's over there. And now you're standing in a new place that's over here, far away from the dome. This place, by the way, is yours. It's sacred. Nobody can cross its boundaries unless you allow them. And in this place, far, far away from the dome, you can decorate it however you please. You can make it your own place. The mistake would be, of course, to take this place and drag it back into the dome, asking that world to notice it, to validate it, saying, look what I did. This is my place, begging for them to tell you, good job. But no, 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 no. Instead, you keep this place to yourself outside of that world. Let this place be where creativity happens. Let this place be a cultivation of the imagination, ideas, good ideas, bad ideas, doesn't matter. It's safe here. I guess what I'm trying to say is that for myself and for you, there's a part of ourselves that might be undiscovered due to the distractions that we're all in, whether it's scrolling through Instagram or Twitter or Pinterest, or TikTok. And the part of you that's undiscovered is who 
who you might be that when you're not inside that hurricane of information. And in, that, in this new place, you could ask yourself, what do you really like? What do you really hate? What would happen if you just let yourself be disconnected for a few hours or days or weeks? We're all so used to letting that swirl of data, the internet, information. We're so used to letting that define who we are, what we do, what we feel, what we feel we have to say, that it might be a strange new territory to discover who you are when you're outside of it. We as a collective, as a population, as a civilization have been hypnotically fixated into a place where the idea of stepping away feels like you're sort of betraying everyone in there as though you're supposed to stay there for some weird reason. They might even gaslight you for being selfish and wanting to focus on yourself. In a way, by staying at the mercy of the social media world, you're kind of betraying your own self, your own potential, your own voice. Sometimes we're afraid of what we might discover about ourselves, sure, that we might find things about ourselves that do not line up with what's accepted back there in the dome. But hey, that's okay. That's your idiosyncrasy. That's who you are. And I would champion the idea of figuring out what that is and leaning into it, leaning into whatever makes you, you. However, outside of this place, the reason we want to go back in the dome, in the distractions where you feel numb and almost comforted by a strange hypnosis is that when you're not numb and distracted, you might not like what you see in yourself. The mirror might show you something you despise, which by the way, that's okay too. It's a great place to start, to work on yourself. What is it that you don't like? Is it really that bad anyway? Why not offer yourself some compassion and motivation in that scenario to work on those parts of you? Is it your art, your style, your personality, your flaws? All these things can improve over time, which by the way, especially for me, therapy really, really helps with this kind of thing. It's uh, really helpful to get a professional to kind of point out things in your blind spot it definitely helped me. I'm not really sponsored by uh, by this, but if you go to psychologytoday.com or BetterHelp or something, you can find a local therapist. And a lot of them have a sliding scale, which means you can um, kind of let them know whether or not you can afford their services and they can sometimes accommodate your needs. Anyway, yeah, so back to the whole metaphorical dome and your sacred place that's far away from that that dome you know there's beauty to be found here who knows what you might be missing out on in yourself the things that might bewilder you or take hold of your soul to grip you and the the effort is required for you to be a little bit vulnerable but see that's the thing that artists do and even i talking about this uh, I also have a hard time with this but whatever it is that you discover when you're on your own there are plenty of different kinds of experiences that the universe kind of throws your way how you interpret that whether it's your internal experiences external relationships or what you like whatever that's you that's your art so regarding this place this kind of oasis separate from the dome, at least for me, is kind of a representation of what life was once like for me and others in my generation. See, I grew up in a sort of sweet spot time period, right between when the world didn't have internet and when it did. I was, I was maybe 15 or, or so when high-speed internet became ubiquitous everywhere. And it wasn't until 18 or 19 that our phones pretty much became our connection to the world. And, you know, going back to the pre-internet age, uh, when I was around 11, my friends and I would spend an entire day outside, you know, uh, like during summer, we'd, we'd hop on our bikes and head over to these uh, dirt hills behind this factory and ride down them over and over. And afterward, we'd stop at the food mart, grab some, some pop, aka soda. Here in the Midwest, we call it pop. Um, maybe some beef jerky, candy, uh, and just kind of have a good time outside. And, you know, we wouldn't even say or talk the whole time. It's just kind of being out there. Uh, and, you know, the sun would start to set. 
we'd head back toward our homes. But the thing is, like, even when we got to home, we'd still be playing outside in the yard when it was dark out. Uh, I do remember those days, like, there were lightning bugs flying around, little fights happening between kids, Pokemon cards being traded in. And for the most part, the crazy thing is our parents and families had no idea idea where we were the whole day because we didn't have phones. We didn't have some kind of lifeline to uh, immediate safety. And I think there was a certain feeling of freedom there with that kind of danger of, of not having that lifeline. You know, despite the risk of not being connected to some kind of guardian, whether it's your parents or whatever. But now with phones, I don't know, I think it's a blessing and a curse because most kids won't really know what it's like to be disconnected from that safety net. And I think disconnected from that, I guess, net is where a lot of personal growth could happen. Because when I think about it, to me, I feel like it would be absolutely weird to grow up into the age of Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, where that's just the norm and everyone's a part of it, which I'm sure there'll be... (laughs) many people from that generation who might scoff at what I'm saying, but the unfortunate thing about that situation is you're automatically born into a digital system and your neurology is attached to that, hardwired to make it so it's very difficult to step away from it and discover things for yourself. At least for me, since I didn't have, you know, YouTube or whatever in high school, I had to develop my own way of learning. So my skill set today whether it's painting, drawing, uh, understanding color, light. Uh, I think the skill set of, of learning that comes from my own constant curiosity, trying to puzzle out how to do oil paintings just by looking at low-resolution JPEGs of process images. I'd get some paint, I'd mix it, I'd, I'd do tons and tons of sketches uh, from comic books. And yeah, I'd, I did go to art school to learn about design, but I'd say in my past, the greatest skill set I learned wasn't really anatomy or color, but instead it was learning how to learn on my own. And what I'm saying is it doesn't mean you should forego all these learning opportunities, whether it's YouTube, Gumroad, online courses and all that. But what I'm saying is there's so much to be explored by separating from it all. You never know what you might discover about yourself, your own art, uh, or whatever, if you haven't taken the time to journey out away from it all. So that's what we're here for today. Just during this video, uh, disconnecting from those distractions for a fraction of your day. Personally, I want you and myself to be in a place where we can sort of see the world again, anew, fresh, not with the, the lens that has built up for years because of our sort of residing in those digital spaces, whether we're public figures there or just lurking. And another way to think about it is, well, if you think about how school works or any given domain of human activity, you have different, I guess, divisions. So in high school or middle school, you have those who are more inclined for art, music, theater. Then you have others who are into athletic things like sports. Boring. Um, But within those domains, there's also, as we all know, those who sort of elevate and rise because of their performance or contribution to whatever that domain is, Uh, whether it's ability to perform either on stage, music, art, or being really good at uh, the sports. But, you know, the point is, in those domains, depending on where you are on that list or hierarchy, you may or may not feel good about yourself. And if you already have low self-worth, that could start weighing down on you a lot. And it's not just with, uh, you know, talent or skill or stuff like that, but, you know, uh, relationships or uh, social interactions between groups and, you know, who are you within the, the friend group. There are so many aspects that happen in those environments, and I feel like social media is taking that, let's say, situation and amplifying it. So if you imagine Instagram like a big place, kind of like the dome thing, uh, obviously there's those who just get ridiculous amount of attention. And if you feel like your work already sucks and you're never going to make it and blah, 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 and those other people are getting elevated, celebrated, and then you look at yourself, you're like, wow, 
I clearly feel like I'm on the lower end of things, therefore I feel bad about myself, therefore I'm going to feel worse over and over again every time I go back to Instagram or Twitter, whatever. And I think it's perfectly okay to not be at the top, and it's perfectly okay to be quote-unquote at the bottom, because everybody starts somewhere. But what I'm saying is you don't have to keep going back to that place to keep reminding yourself that you feel that way. Instead, because I think it's perfectly fine to feel that way, um, there's nothing wrong with you inherently. There is just something wrong with how we're viewing ourselves. So what I'm saying is it's taking a step out of that to address those kinds of issues, to strengthen yourself, to be in a position of empowerment so that when you do go back, you're perfectly okay with seeing other people succeed. You're perfectly okay with feeling like you're missing out on the new trend or, uh, or other people's work going viral. And then, you know, cause prior to that, you might say, well, and I know I do this. Oh, the only reason they got viral is because they do this kind of art and they always use this kind of lighting and this kind of subject matter. Of course, people are going to like it. And so we start justifying for ourselves, uh, why they're succeeding and we're not. And then we make it about our own personal self-worth. And that is a mistake. Ideally, we find a way to separate our own self-worth, identity, ego away from the art that we do. Now, certainly art can be personal. I'm not saying to not make your art personal. But what I'm saying is if you can find a way to separate the idea that your art represents you and your value in that system. Um, and I say that because if you go back to that example, it can be very detrimental to your well-being, your mental health, your, uh, if you have depression, it could get amplified, especially with a place like Twitter, where it seems like a, a grand, grand majority of people there are like already, I guess, upset with the world understandably there's a lot of messed up things that happen humans are messed up we we have our own problems of course but i feel like most of the people there are kind of in a preemptive defensive position kind of seeing the world and everything as a threat and constantly searching with this kind of radar like scanning for things to be upset about to justify why they feel the way they feel about themselves or about the world and it's like they're kind of like these these hunters of of the internet and I, uh, certain people I know have decided to leave places like that, and, and I understand why. Uh, and I myself don't use Twitter. If you, if you follow me, you know that I occasionally might retweet my friend's artworks or something, but I do not engage. It's like poking a bee's nest. And I think even just saying that right now is somewhat poking that bee's nest. What did he say about us? <laughs> <sighs> Bottom line is, I don't think we are wired or meant to be operating with so much stimulation the way these digital places are. We're not, we're not meant for it. I think we're meant for smaller communities where you can kind of track uh, and, and kind of have a, I guess, uh, a familiarity with everybody there. You know who, uh, who's running the place, you know who, you know, <laughs> the village idiot might be, blah, blah, blah. Um, but to kind of scale that up and Suddenly you're in the face of hundreds of thousands of people and all these potential, uh, am I good enough? Uh, who's this person? Oh, oh, who's that person? Let's take them down, blah, blah, blah. It, it just becomes, it turns us into monsters. And <laughs> this is kind of like uh, some video games. So I, I just recently, I know I'm like six or seven years too late on this. I uh, started playing Bloodborne because of my friend Steven. Not to spoil much, but it seems like the people of the this town, uh, Yarnum, with the intent of removing the the negativity, let's say the scourge or the, the plague, they themselves became the beasts who are, I guess, destroying the place. So the irony is like, we become the villains who we're trying to take down. Uh, and I think social media turns us into those monsters if you let it take you too far. Even if on the surface you might be perfectly fine and all that, but deep down there there is a part of us that I think needs to be addressed. And I and that's why I painted that whole picture, not literally but metaphorically, of a place that's separate from that, where you can kind of retreat to and remember that you you could just go into nature or a garden or a coffee shop and just a place that there's no stimulation regarding that social world. And you can kind of <sighs> breathe 
without constant reminders about everything you're missing out on, everything that blah, 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 blah. You know, I might sound like a broken record saying all this stuff, but that's fine. I don't know where we're going with this, this uh, future of ours as artists, digital artists. I am quite optimistic about it, but right now I think uh, we are in the process where we're readjusting our human nature and realizing what we're becoming and what we need to do, what we need to prevent uh, within ourselves. So yeah, find a way to spend time in that oasis of yours. Even if you didn't know that it existed, you can make it. So I have been getting comments and uh, messages and DMs about uh, these videos and how they do very much enjoy this long form where I'm just rambling about. Um, while the first half of this uh, talk was mostly just written out as bullet points and I can kind of just read it off. And every time I do that, I'm like hoping that that will kind of um, become a long conversation, but it always ends up being 15, 20 minutes of talking. Um, so at this point, I'm certainly running out of things to say, especially when I want to just go get some more coffee. And the artwork that you're seeing on the screen was already pre-recorded. I'm not doing that right now. It was definitely fun doing that, by the way. I was, uh, I had on these just long form shows about, um, you know, these, these personal trainers, I think it's called, uh, fit to fat or fat to fit. Basically these personal trainers are willingly taking on clients and then the trainers will gain like 30 or 40 pounds just to kind of be in solidarity with the client and together they kind of, uh, get in shape. And it shows how <laughs> the personal trainer at first was like, yeah, it's no problem. All you got to do is have the discipline and, uh, all these people are just lazy, but the, but then they take on the weight and then they realize how tired they're always feeling, how unmotivated, how difficult it is just to go about life. And, uh, when, when you're not always keeping up with fitness and, uh, it's like, interesting to see that's new to them because for me i've you know i've been down that place where um life had zero motivation for me watching that happen and watching them go uh was it three or four months or, or 14 weeks something like that where they're getting in shape together but what's what's amazing is also the relationship they build with each other you know they're kind of like dancing and celebrating it's, it's just a fun time i think i like it personally i've actually been for the first time quite consistent with fitness for the past two months i haven't missed a day uh, working out every day with a, a group. So that's been really great. And I'm seeing differences, not just in like physique, but uh, how I feel. Like I feel amazing way more often than not. Uh, my sleep improved. And at the age of 33, recently my birthday, um, I know that I want to get in really good shape now before it becomes harder. Because I know if I put it off till I'm 40, uh, you know, who knows what might, what, what might be weighing me down at that point. So yeah, uh, two months in, let's make it three months, let's make it four months, keep going. And uh, it teaches me a lot about myself in that at first I was like, okay, well, I wanna start this workout journey, but if I don't see results immediately, it's disheartening and I feel like giving up. But much like with art, the same stuff that I preach in terms of, okay, if you just keep drawing, if you just don't give up at your 10th drawing and draw 100 heads, draw 500 hands. You'll eventually see results. And, you know, two months in, it's like, yeah, there it is. But the first month, I'm like, why isn't it working? Why don't I look like a, uh, you know, Instagram person or whatever? But it, it's just action over time, you know? So that's that. Anyway, I'm out of things to say. Uh, hopefully, I don't know how long this recording is because I end up editing it and... Um, there's some parts where I'm just silent for a good like minute thinking about what to say. Uh, this stuff is definitely easier with other people if I'm having a conversation. But yeah, anyway, um, hopefully this is uh, a decent amount of time for you and myself to step away from that big dome of social media and discover who we are within ourselves, blah, 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 cliche, spiritual, yada, yada, mumbo jumbo, etc. So, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm just kidding. All right, cool. Uh, thanks for watching. And if the video is still running with the drawing, I'm probably going to have some music playing. You know, just keep it on. See how far you can get with your own work. Uh, maybe meditate or something. Draw a head or a hand, a box, anything. I will see you next time. Have a good one.